I think women can do anything. You get your bitch ass back in the kitchen and make me some pie. Are you? I'm boss. Oh shit. Here we go again. Yeah, that, that oh, works. I like All right. That okay. All right, moving, moving on. Hey, what about Tula? I figured this would be a great way to start out Monday. Welcome back, folks. Hope you enjoyed the content over the last couple days while I was on vacation. We're going to talk some Charlie's Angels this Monday afternoon, which I know nobody wants to talk Charlie's Angels because nobody wanted to see Charlie's Angels what, four years ago, almost four years ago when it came out and flopped miserably, which we'll talk about the logistics and the, financial of the financials of that. I'm tongue-tied because this is so ridiculous. I didn't plan on making a video about Charlie's Angels today. I had about three other ones lined up. Those will be waiting till tomorrow because this is funny. We got the show tonight. Let's go. Elizabeth Banks says she didn't try to make a feminist manifesto with Charlie's Angels reboot. It's not a lie. If you believe it. Boy, if only we had receipts for any of the things Elizabeth Banks said when she was doing the press lead up to this movie, which we're going to go into how badly this movie failed in a little bit. But let's take a look at this article, which came out a couple hours ago. Uh, she reflects on the bad treatment the media gave her Charlie's Angels reboot. Well, this is the problem. She said men had to go see this movie, and I remember this from the lead-up because, God rest his soul, me and Groovinator had a bet on this, and he had to go see, it was Black Christmas, and I had to go see this garbage. And I went to see it, opening night, me and all of four other people in the theater, and Ford v. Ferrari, and I can't remember what was playing the third cinema there, but that was packed too, and this had literally, like I said, uh, three guys and two women in the theater, and that was it. Nobody was, there was no reaction at all during the course of the entire movie, except for some laughs when something was stupid. Not that anything was really funny or enjoyable during this. And I'm not saying that to be obtuse or contrarian. I'm literally saying that because you can go back and look at my coverage leading up to the release of the movie. It was terrible. The original, I own the other two, the Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu, Iterations and those are fun, but we'll talk about those two in a little bit. Uh, Banks thinks that the media misinterpreted the message behind her Charlie's Angels reboot. Are you fucking high? It's already been four years since the director took the popular franchise back to the big screen, and there's still a lot to say what happened to that poorly received film. Not a lot to say about it that hasn't already been said. It was bad, it lost money. Elizabeth Banks put her foot in her mouth in the lead up. They led you to believe it was this feminist garbage, and lo and behold, it was feminist garbage that was even more poorly written than we should come to expect. Starring, and saying that this movie starred anybody is a stretch. Uh, we had Kristen Stewart, who is a virtual nobody at this point, let's be honest. I mean, she's had a... F I don't care. You can say what you want. Twilight, that, how long ago was that shit? What else has Kristen Stewart been in that have been anything? Uh, Naomi Scott, the only reason I knew who she was was from the Power Rangers 2017 movie and the new Aladdin. Uh, Ella Balinska, never heard of her. She's like 5'11", 20 pounds, and she's beating on like 280-pound guys in this movie. It's freaking hilarious. The movie tried to revive the popular television franchise, as Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu did in the early 2000s. But Banks' attempt was a huge failure. For many, it was because it had a strong feminist message behind it, but the director thinks that was just a matter of misinterpretation. No, because she came out and said, the movie is full of sneaky feminist messages, which right here in this headline, from an interview with Elizabeth Banks, who wrote, directed, produced, and starred in, Speaking with Rolling Stone, which is a piece of shit magazine, Banks reflected on what happened with the movie and the treatment it received from the media, which ultimately helped it make stumble at the box office. See, the media tried to push this 
that you had to see it. Oh, men have to see this movie. If men don't go see this movie, it's because you don't care about women. When who, who, what man would throw the first female action star, Jennifer Lawrence, under the bus because there was never one before her? He's out of line, but he's right. For me, regardless of what the actual product was, so much of the story was the media wanted to tell you about Charlie's Angels. It was all about some feminist manifesto. Your words, Elizabeth Banks, it was your words that it was feminist. People kept saying, you, you're the first female director of Charlie's Angels. And I was like, they've only done a TV show in MCG's movies. What are you talking about? There's not this long legacy. I just love this franchise. Liar! There was not this gender to gender for me. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. That was very much laid on top of the work. And it was a little bit of a bummer. I felt like it pigeonholed me and the audience for the movie. To lose control of the narrative like that was a real bummer. You realize how the media can frame something regardless of how you framed it. I happen to be a woman who directed a Charlie's Angels movie that happened to star three incredible women. You can't control the media saying, you're a lady director and that's special, which it is, but it's not the only thing. It's not special that she's a female director. It's not. I'm sorry. You're not special just because you're a female and you're a director. You're not. You're just another director that happens to be a woman. Elizabeth Banks is open to direct a superhero movie. Okay. So um, Elizabeth Banks was in the James Gunn evil Superman movie, Brightburn. And I, I mean, her directing, I don't. Why? Because you failed at everything else. Like, Cocaine Bear made some money, all right? But, I mean, you failed at your big-time action flick, so you want to go make this safe paint-by-numbers Marvel movie because she sees the writing on the wall with Marvel. And, and don't give me this gaslighting shit that Marvel's not feminist-driven. It, it is. Come on. Like, you literally cannot sit there and see every... Not every. Okay, I'm being a bit hyperbolic, but the main line heroes be replaced by females who are derivative characters that nobody really gives a shit about and then tell me it's not a feminist agenda tell me that it's not when you have people from marvel the creators behind the scenes coming out and saying that but then you want to defend it because you're a stand for the mcu which is fine but don't deny that there's something there i mean jesus christ like you spit up my ass and tell me it's fucking raining you morons not every character in every story that Marvel does is strictly feminist, but they all have had some aspect of feminism, men bad, men stupid, men evil in them. They have. You cannot deny that. You cannot deny that. And it, to do that is is just ignoring reality. That would like me that would be like me saying I have a thick flowing mane of hair on top of my head. That's ignoring reality. Or me saying I'm a woman. That's ignoring reality. Okay? Elizabeth Banks is ignoring the reality of the statement she made, the harm she did to her own product, her own project, caused your investors, the studios, to lose upwards of, I believe it was around $30 million. Okay? 30 to $40 million. So, that's on you. You don't get to now, four years later... Pretend like the internet just forgot all the stupidity and asininity and feminist drivel that you espoused on the lead up to the movie. You cannot do that. It does not work because we have all the receipts. So now you want to go direct a superhero movie. Uh, Banks has already gotten behind the camera for many different projects, proving she's a versatile director. So for her to get to the superhero genre wouldn't be a surprise. In fact, the director has already expressed an interest on working on a specific character from the Marvel comics, Thor. You serious? Oh, yeah. Because Thor hasn't been ruined enough already by Taco Tuesday Taika Waititi. The, the character, what, what are you going to do to this character that hasn't already been done by Taika Waititi as far as, like, ruining it goes? And spare me the, oh, well, Thor the Dark World and the original Thor were terrible. They made him so much better now that he's a, he's a laughing stock. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I didn't see Love and Thunder because my wife, who's a huge Thor fan, watched it said it was shit. And she loved Ragnarok. I hated it. She loved it. And she hated Thor Love and Thunder. So, and, and this is, you know, this is coming from a female who's a normie to the giddy, well, is, has caught on to what Marvel's doing and no longer really cares. Like, I was 
really proud of her, how bad she <laughs> disliked Ant-Man, Quantumania. It was, I was like, this is why I fell in love with you. You've seen the light. In the same interview, Banks also clarified some rumors about her being attached to Thor Ragnarok while also expressing her desire of joining the world of comic book adaptations. Let me dispel that a little bit in terms of characters that I love Marvel. That's the character I would have loved to have taken on. I have never had a pitch meeting or about Thor. And yeah, if it was the right character and the great idea, I would love to direct a superhero movie. My door is really open to anything. That's because you want work. That's why you did Cocaine Bear. Banks would definitely be an interesting addition for Marvel Studios. DC Studios or any company doing superhero projects in the future, whether it's male or female characters or not. Nope. When somebody looks at something and says, oh, that'd be interesting, and I had the slightest bit of trepidation, I take interesting that it'll mean it's going to be shit, and I'm just trying to be nice and wait and see what happens. That's okay. That's okay if that's your prerogative. But no, this is utterly ridiculous. Elizabeth Banks has failed at this action genre. She doesn't need to do a superhero movie. I mean, but at this point, why not? Give her a Marvel movie. Let her direct a Marvel movie. Hell, give her Thor 5. Let her let her show off her chops for how good she can fit in with the other hens uh, in the MCU behind the camera. He's a monster. Here's the box office mojo numbers. As we can see, Charlie's Angels lost around $32 million after marketing, advertising, distribution. Critical reception, 52%. Audience score, 78%. But that 78% is not really indicative of how bad this movie was and how few people actually went to the theater to watch it. I know it seems confusing when you look at two movies that are 23 years old and you're like, how did we get here? How did we lose $32 million on a movie that's just supposed to feature three hot chicks, be fun, have them kick a little ass, you know, and let the audience go home happy knowing that they watched something they spent their money on and they enjoyed it. And we didn't get that with the 2019 version, and we did with the two older ones, which are deemed problematic by today's standards because of the way the women are portrayed, which makes no sense because they're supposed to be sexy, fun bombshells. But that's it, gang. That's a look at Elizabeth Banks and her insanity and continually believing that her, her words, the marketing, and all of her feminist nonsense wasn't to blame for Charlie's Angels losing $32 million in 2019. That's right, folks. So, did you enjoy this video? If you did, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, share the video, ding the bell for notifications, and be sure to come back soon because we'll have more great content for you, including all of our weekly live streams, more videos. Until then, I'm E. Temple Kuyan from The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow, and I will catch you on the next one. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all. Cruise, thank you very much. It's a waste of good suffering.